Next, I'm excited to welcome Locke Wynn, who's a data engineer at Mayan, and my co-founder and the Big Eye CTO, Igor Grasnov. In this co-presentation, they're going to together introduce you to using Big Eye in a CI-CD pipeline together with Snowflake and DBT. We're glad to have you here. Over to you, Locke and Igor. Hello, everyone, and thanks for joining our talk. Uh, I'm Igor, and today we will be talking about Big Eye's Deltas feature, which allows teams to increase confidence through data CI. Um, so let's uh, do a quick introduction to uh, uh, the two of us and uh, talk a little bit about Big Eye Deltas. My name is Igor Grasnov. I'm the co-founder and CTO here at Big Eye. I am a software engineer by training, but I've done data things my whole career. Right before uh, starting Big Eye, I was one of the first people called a data engineer at Uber, where I did everything from data infrastructure to ETL, data modeling, reporting, analytics. And I worked both on the core data platform team as well as embedded in different uh, feature teams doing analytics work for them. I started Big Eye as a way to take a lot of the lessons that I've learned about scaling a data platform at Uber and packaging them up in a way that is accessible to the rest of the industry. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm really honored to be here to speak with Igor uh, about how we're using Big Eye uh, at Manian Analytics. Uh, I'm working as a data engineer uh, at, at the Manian team. We have a team uh, of uh, five people on the uh, on the data side. Uh, previously to Manian, uh, I've worked uh, on data uh, on data platforms uh, at uh, several fintechs uh, and e-commerce startup. Great. Thanks for that intro, Locke. So before we get into Locke's case study on how uh, he's implemented data CI, let's talk a little bit about Big Eye itself and the Deltas feature specifically. Big Eye is a data reliability platform. And what it does is it helps data teams find and prevent problems within their data. In this chart, you can see an example workflow of a data platform with Big Eye involved. You have Snowflake as your data warehouse, and Big Eye is monitoring the data within Snowflake for any anomalies. And when it detects something that looks different or anomalous, it sends an alert, in this case to Slack, which goes to the data en uh, engineer in charge. And the data engineering team now has visibility into things that are going wrong with their data pipelines and with the uh, data that they provide. And they can notify the business ahead of time before somebody finds out about broken data uh, through a, a bad dashboard or through a broken machine learning model. Big Eye also provides the UI to do exploration and understand what is actually going on within your data and can trigger uh, airflow jobs and other uh, web hooks, as we'll, we'll see uh, later in the case study. The Deltas feature within Big Eye specifically helps data teams find and prevent problems across tables and databases. Uh, Deltas takes the concept of looking for anomalies one step uh, within a table one step further to cross table comparisons. And in the case of Deltas, it doesn't really matter if the tables are within the same database or not. What teams use Deltas for is to ensure that their data warehouse migration goes smoothly. Maybe they're replicating data from a transactional database to an analytics database, and they want to make sure that everything is making it over on time. Or in what we're about to hear from Locke, that you are running data pipelines and transformations and making changes to those transformations. And you want to make sure that you are only affecting the data that you expect to affect uh, through those changes. And that is what we consider the notion of continuous integration and CI testing. This exists today in software engineering. And Locke is going to tell us about how he is leveraging uh, Big Guy's Delta's feature in order to provide data CI um, for his team and organization. OK, so uh, first, uh, I'm going to go a little bit first over the context of what Mayan does. Uh, we provide analytic services to Amazon merchants. Uh, so we have merchants that sell products on Amazon. We provide analytics and reporting to them, and we provide optimizations on their advertising. To do analytics and reporting, we provide dashboards uh, embedded in our web app uh, with Looker. And to do advertising optimizations, we build uh, machine learning models to automate ad bits, to automate keyword generation, to 
incorporate uh, sales forecast and so on and so forth. Uh, here's our technical stack. Uh, so like I mentioned briefly, we have uh, Snowflake as our database, very scalable. Uh, I'm gonna go a little bit over the Snowflake pros and cons in the next few slides. For our uh, extractors, we use a combination of different extractors. We use uh, a custom built uh, Airbyte uh, connector, uh, we also use Fiprime for some of the sources, and we have our custom Python connectors as well. Uh, once the data is uh, extracted and loaded into Snowflake, we use DBT as our transformer. Uh, and uh, once the data is transformed and cleaned, we model the data in Looker using LookML, uh, and then finally build dashboards in Looker, in Looker, and then embedding those dashboards into our web app where our uh, clients, uh, the Amazon merchants can do the exploration themselves. Uh, all of this is also orchestrated uh, in Airflow and our code is uh, hosted in GitLab. Um, and so the problem with this, uh, the, the, the current problem that we have with, uh, uh, with uh, this data pipeline is that using DBT sometimes is uh, hard to have a lot of confidence in our code changes um so one question that we ask very frequently is how do we merge with a lot more confidence uh, with lower rate of change failure so after merging there's usually some bug that we have to spend a lot of time to debug and uh, fix uh, and then uh, it's it's very slow to debug because the um, DAC pipeline is very complicated with a lot of amazon merchants and a lot of step in between um, so here uh, in the screenshot, you can see an example of a really simple uh, merge request that uh, I've pushed in. Uh, so it's just adding clustering key or indexing key to some of our tables. Uh, four commits, very few changes, but it takes from February 9th to February 17th for us to successfully merge this uh, merge request into our production. Um, so how do we go about solving that with Big Eye? Uh, here's, here's the solution architecture. So uh, first, uh, we clone our production schema in Snowflake. Second, we in DBT, we run the models uh, that are changed uh, in the development branch in GitLab. Next, uh, we use BigEye to compare the development branch uh, in Snowflake with the production branch in Snowflake. Uh, and then finally, we get of that results in deltas and export it to GitLab. All of this is coordinated uh, by GitLab CI because we use GitLab as our repository code control. Uh, and finally, this entire project uh, takes a lot of inspiration from GitLab themselves. Uh, I have included the re repository link uh, from the GitLab data team and the explainer video uh, and the entire pipeline take five minutes to run uh, really quickly and really efficiently. Uh, also adds a lot of confidence to, to our merge request. So first, I'm gonna go over a little bit uh, to why we use zero, zero cloning in Snowflake. Uh, there are three key features that we think is really helpful to this uh, testing pipeline. First, uh, we can copy the entire production schema uh, to uh, another cloned schema, uh, which takes one minute and doesn't take any extra charges for duplicated data. Second, we can do time travel uh, and basically revert back uh, like a good revert uh, on our data. Uh, and finally, third, uh, we can have a native DBT connection so we don't need to build any extra plumbing uh, to connect a Snowflake with Python or with DBT. Uh, and all of these three features basically enable us to have one schema per production, uh, per development branch uh, and allow us to encourage testing on as many branches as possible. Uh, finally, we also have uh, AWS credits on Snowflake, uh, which make it uh, even more scalable for analytics and testing uh, at my end. Uh, a little bit more context about DBT. Uh, if you have not used DBT, um, DBT is basically a way to modularize, modularize SQL models. Uh, and so here at the bottom right, you can see that uh, each um, node uh, in the uh, pipeline is basically a SQL model that is reusable by downstream models, uh, which both allow us to reuse the models, uh, but also do a lot more testing on the, the, on the models. 
Uh, DBT Cloud is also free, uh, which allow us to do really complicated orchestrator uh, and allow us to have more transparency into how the transformation pipeline is uh, performing. Um, so here uh, is a preview of uh, how the pipeline is run uh, in GitLab CI. So here you can see two, two runs of the pipeline. The first run actually failed. Um, at the second step at dbt run, you can see a, a, a red X mark there. Uh, but the second run uh, is uh, the entire pipeline run successfully uh, after uh, some changes are pushed uh, to the merge request. Here is the uh, full pipeline run. Uh, so you, you can see the three steps that are defined uh, in GitLab CI. First uh, is the build snowflake step where we basically clone the production schema into a development schema and then uh, which is sent to the run dbt step uh, that takes the dev development schema, run the change models, uh, and then finally, uh, big I deltas are going to be comparing the development schema against the production schema, uh, sending back the results um, as test results uh, in GitLab. Uh, here you can see the, delta, uh, the deltas that are created by this CI-CD process. So here in the naming, you, that you can see that we are doing testing on the dbt models repository. You can also see the uh, merge request uh, hash uh, 84, uh, zero CE uh, and so on and so forth. And you can also see the tables that we are comparing and the schema that we're comparing. We're comparing the production schema, the Mayan schema against the development schema, the big ICICD schema. Uh, for each of the model, uh, we are doing multiple comparisons on multiple metrics. Uh, so for here, for, for example, you can see uh, column uh, on the column SCID, we are doing four metric comparisons, count of nodes, cardinality, duplicates, and empty, string, uh, empty strings. Um, this specific table comparison doesn't have any alerts or any failures, but uh, you can also see from the previous slide that there are some other failures that's possible uh, when we do these comparisons as well. Uh, the key benefit is that the result is really transparent. Um, and then we can also have a SQL debug query from Big I Deltas as well, which enable us to uh, really quickly copy and paste the SQL query and uh, dig deeper into why uh, the data is changing or like the impact uh, of the uh, code changes that we have pushed uh, to the most request. I'm going to take a little bit deeper into the GitLab CI YAML uh, file that, that orchestrate the entire CI pipeline. Uh, so here uh, are some globals and the stages uh, that exist uh, in the CI profile. What we're doing is basically we're pulling an image uh, that is hosted uh, in GitLab uh, called the big eye image hosted in the data CI CD repository. We are defining some variables, uh, the source schema, the target schema, uh, and then we're defining the four stages, uh, the build stage where we clone the Snowflake schema, the run stage where we're running dbt, and the test stage where we're running big I deltas. Uh, a little bit more details into how we're cloning the schema. Uh, we are basically defining a script uh, Snowflake copy uh, where it can be ran as a, a command line um, where we're creating a clone on the database uh, defined uh, as the uh, data warehouse uh, on the source schema defined as Mayan and target schema defined as big ICICD. Um, then uh, in the uh, dbt run step, we're basically cloning uh, our production. Uh, we're basically cloning the development branch uh, on the dbt models uh, repository using an image. We're checking that branch out. Uh, we're providing we're providing permissions so that the cloning is successful. Uh, and then also uh, we are exporting all the change models because uh, we want to only run dbt on the change models where definition of those models have changed. Uh, and then uh, afterwards, we're also exporting all the change models so that um, Big Eye can take uh, those change models and run deltas only on those change models. Next, uh, we're running dbt. Uh, so here is a lot of code, but 
uh, it's basically taking on the change models and it's running change on the change models and it's uh, downstream tables as well. So for example, um, let's go back to the stack pipeline. So for example, if uh, staging app orders change, we are gonna be running DBT uh, so that uh, we can change the definition of that table. And then we want to run all orders and packed orders as well to see if there's any breaking change from staging app orders that affecting the downstream models. And then after running DBT, we are also exporting all the run models uh, to the next step where we are triggering big I deltas uh, on all the change models and all the downstream models. Uh, so here you can see um, in the script, uh, we are first checking all the change models. Uh, we are also granting select to big I so that big I can run deltas on those models. Uh, we are triggering deltas um, as uh, you can see in the fourth step, poetry run Python main.py. Uh, we are triggering deltas on all the change models. And then finally, we are creating artifacts in the artifacts section. You can see that we are exporting big I results uh, as a unit format in XML uh, so that it can be displayed in uh, GitLab CI. So what are the results and what are then the next steps uh, that we can do to improve the CI, uh, CD process? Uh, the results is uh, we have uh, cut the time to merge uh, by as much as uh, 50% uh, while also having artifacts on each of our merge requests. Really transparent, we can look back in all of the merge requests to see where we have failed, or what we can do to improve uh, and decrease uh, failures. Um, and then like uh, our CTO can look at all the merge requests and have better metrics on change failures. The next steps is uh, we we have uh, heard from Big Eye that uh, Big Eye is providing an official SDK uh, and we're gonna be migrating to that official SDK, which is gonna be supported by Big Eye as well. Uh, we, are, uh, we are also looking into show better Delta's results in GitLab and finally, we are also looking into integrate the big I Delta's results in Looker with OCaml. Uh, and here I'm gonna transition back to uh, Igor so that we can uh, have a conclusion. Thanks a lot for that, Locke. That was a really interesting case study on how you're using Deltas to improve your data reliability. So let's do a quick review of what we've covered. Deltas are a powerful tool for data reliability. So as we covered in the beginning, Big Eye is a data reliability platform. Deltas are really just one piece and they are a way for you to ensure that data across different tables and across transformations is reliable. But there's a lot more uh, within Big Eye to discover around ensuring that your data is fully reliable and you know the state of it at all times. Using Deltas for CI, helps data teams like Locke uh, and his team at Mayan move with more confidence. You gain uh, the ability to see what your changes are impacting and how they will actually change production before they act, they're all out. And so if you do create any unexpected change, you can catch that early and assess its impact rather than being surprised later on when your production pipelines run. And finally, to piggyback on what Locke said a little bit earlier, there is a private belt, uh, there is a private beta of deltas uh, using DBT with GitHub or GitLab. We are currently looking for new customers to onboard onto this. If you want to build out a pipeline similar to something that Locke, what Locke has talked about today, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, you can uh, request a demo or you can reach out to me directly. Um, and with that, uh, I, I, I'm Igor Grasnov. This is my email, igor at big .com. Feel free to reach out to me and or Locke if you have any questions about anything that you've heard today. Thank you.